This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the chairman and CEO of Moss and Gold, Mr. Michael Hudson. Mike, how are you? Top of the world down under, as I usually <laughs> say, Gerardo. Well, I know you're busy. You have news coming soon out of Australia where you are currently in, but you just had some news um, in regards to the project in Finland, you've doubled the gold cobalt resource. The devil is always in the details, and I would love for you to provide some context there. I know you and I spoke a bit off air, and of course, the magic number that everybody hopes to hit is that million ounce threshold. Um, but this is, I, I joked, but I was serious. This is more of a, of a progress report and an update than it is the end game, right? Can you explain why that is and, and what it came in at? Because what the numbers that you provided are, are impressive. Yeah. So uh, we've doubled the resource, uh, which is critical and that's a great upgrade in itself. Um, the grade stayed fairly constant and the tons doubled, uh, 70 plus percent falls within open pitable resources at a head grade of two and a half grams gold equivalent of which two and 2.1 grams was gold so very nice grade remember the average grade worldwide is one gram per ton so this is double the average grade it's three million gold uh, from surface We've got some very nice higher grades and some sensitivity tables uh, that we, with the devil in the detail go and go and i urge your readers to look at that and and the grade um, holds up so you can you can you can increase the cutoff um, and, uh, and, and the grade goes dramatically up without losing too many ounces. So, so it's, it's, it, it's, it's an estimate, of course. Resources are estimates, and this is the way it's optimised with current metal prices, um, but it could look uh, uh, many different ways. We, we were hoping to get close to the million ounces. That was our aspiration and what I've talked about, and basically we're you know, half or three-quarters of a drill program away from achieving that uh, just through through conservatism i'd say of how resources are calculated and and not enough drilling we um we just need to do a little bit more to to, to get it to, to that number but but it's on a path and it's on a path to to what is becoming substantial now and uh and we've got five rigs planned from december and well actually one rig starting next week drilling a long strike from the resource areas so so it's a it's a it's a great interim upgrade, I would say. The rig that you have coming on is that going to drill for extensions to the current resource? Yeah, so the rig that is coming on next week will look for extensions about five hundred meters along strike and further uh, from the, the resource areas, which are permitted for winter drilling only the resource area, but um, but we're drilling in these summer areas that are a little drier and we're able to access but come december when everything freezes the focus will be on uh, increasing the size of the high grade portions of this resource that we've identified and some of our very good drilling this year identified uh, infilling those and, and ideally that would aim to increase the grade because it would increase the continuity of those high grade systems bringing in shallow resources we brought in a a fourth area, if you like, uh, an area called Rumayavi, just at tens of thousands of ounces. But that's one of the the, the three near surface targets that we've got. And, and if you can drill shallower tons, it's less drilling per ounce. Um, the, and, that, and, and then drilling also to depth, which has been our strategy for the last few years. These things are open. So um, we can't ignore that in, in isolation. And then and then also what we, we, what we just talked about, finding new areas to to bring pre-resource areas and pre, uh, you know, earlier stage discoveries uh, and bringing them up the the, uh, the the chain, if you like. So, so that's the strategy. And, and just talking about uh, discovery, you know, most of this discovery came this year. So we had uh, we had a very successful drill season. So the upgrade uh, was was 95% from drilling this year. So about 14 kilometres of drilling got us close to that 350,000 ounces. And if you look at that on a dollar basis, it's about about ten bucks an ounce discovery costs that we're 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 tracking at now. Mike, this is a gold cobalt resource estimate, and and the cobalt part of it, I think, is is not appreciated the way that it should for several reasons. But amongst them, because I think it'll be key and helpful 
um, in in the permitting process. Eventually, obviously, the goal is for a multi million ounce gold deposit or deposits um, with an important cobalt credit that I think again really helps the permitting aspect of this project and makes it incredibly attractive to potential suitors. Can you walk me through that aspect of the estimate? Yeah, so the cobalt adds about 14% in situ value to the resource. Um, and so it's it's clearly a gold project by uh, value, by, by its predominant value, and gold drives everything. But the cobalt, as you, you touched on, is really what will drive, um, in many respects, the, the permitting. So I call cobalt a government metal. Uh, and, and it's very important for the Finnish government uh, because they want to build a a battery supply chain, uh, well, they want to increase their presence in the battery supply chain. Uh, they have the largest refinery for cobalt in the world. It produces 10% of the world's cobalt. It's, um, it's 400 kilometers from our project, our resource. And, and the feed, the, the mined rock that comes to feed that refinery, 90 plus percent of it comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo which doesn't fit the sustainable and ethical supply chains that Finland and Europe are after. So having a homegrown supply of cobalt is very important for Finland. They've just uh, post-COVID uh, budget uh, dedicated 450 million euros to the state mining company, the Finnish Minerals Group. Uh, and um, and we, would, uh, we look forward to, to working closer and closer with that group as we go forward. Mike, you explained that as if you've already had several discussions about the cobalt aspect of this project. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? No, Gerardo. It's it's just a key key part of the, the mix and a, a geologically fortunate mix to have uh, in, in a world that is looking to electrify and in Europe that is really looking to electrify. Well said. Before I let you go, I have to ask about Australia. How are things progressing there? Well, I'm, as I speak, I'm en route uh, to the drill site um, and uh, we've got one rig turning. We've, we've completed three holes at Sunday Creek. The one rig has gone to Redcastle. Another rig will be coming next week. So we'll have two rigs turning there. We've got four geophysical crews. Uh, we've got rocks in the assay, uh, rocks in the assay lab um, as, as I speak. And so you can expect first results soon in the coming weeks. Uh, from from Australia and and uh, you know we're we're genuinely excited about the discovery opportunity. So so Finland adds that very solid base. It's a project on a pathway, uh, and and we we've demonstrated that by this resource upgrade today. And and the Australian side of things and looking for that next high grade epizonal deposit that could look like Fosterville uh, is what uh, is got a lot of people excited, including ourselves. I'm looking forward to it, Mike. Thank you so much for the update. Thanks, Gerardo.